What are some great ways to get yourself warmed up on a night out? I remember you mentioning something along the lines of that years ago. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, if you never have to get ready, if you stay ready, right? So if you have to, I mean, it's it's like this. Every A lot of guys in the past, especially, you know, in the old school pickup community, they talk about getting into state. But um, for me, I mean, a lot of guys, when they, especially when they do a live program with me, um, you know, I do once a month live programs. And, you know, it's interesting. They, they're always asking, you know, how I'm in such a talkative mood, especially if you work a long day or you're on Zoom or in meetings all day. What you have to realize is um, there's a difference between an open and an approach. I open people throughout the day nonstop. When you wake up and go get your coffee, when you go and walk your dog, when you go and see someone walking their dog, you know, um, you know, if you're just constantly opening people, and it takes five seconds to do, then you don't really have to warm up at night. What a lot of guys will do is they'll be very focused during the day, won't do any approaches, and then at night, they'll do all these silly things these freedom from outcome, social freedom exercises, whatever you whatever you want to call it. And the problem with that then is they kind of have this like, fuck it, let loose mentality when they go out to meet girls. And they think that there is this just abundance of women that are out. But what they don't really realize is, you know, just based on a bell curve, based on just normal distribution, there's really only a few women at every venue that are the type of woman that's, that's worth your attention long term. So they are, if you're acting like a buffoon, you're doing push-ups in the nightclub, or you're jumping up and down, getting all silly, uh, that's not really the type of guy that, you know, a very, you know, high value woman actually, actually wants to be with. So what I say is, I mean, if, as long as you're approaching, right, as long as you're approaching these smaller, shorter interactions throughout the day, uh, and you get your legs under you, get your motor moving, right, you get your mouth going, then what ends up happening is when you actually get to the venue, and you see that you're already warmed up, right, you don't actually need to uh, do any sort of drills or silly exercises to then actually start talking to people. And then um, number two, what I would say is uh, approach or have a very low filter for who you approach. You know, I'm opening old ladies. I'm opening guys. I'm opening super hot girls. I'm opening less attractive girls. You know, you, for, you're not really costing yourself any sort of wasted energy or wasted time. If you're in a five second approach, you're actually brightening up everybody's day around you. And you're kind of creating this magnetism to yourself. Uh, you know, I have uh, stunning women approaching me throughout the night at certain venues that I go to. And guys will oftentimes ask, like, oh, how do you know her? When did you meet her? And I'm like, I, I've never met her before. But if she sees that you're constantly approaching people in a way where it also looks like those people are approaching you, there's kind of this magnetism to you. And that's kind of always been what people have, have known me for. Um, if anyone's watched my old videos is there's kind of an enigmaticness to me where people will just kind of start. It's almost like they kind of want to get pulled into the energy. Uh, I remember um, I would do quite a few boot camps with Owen and Owen and I would regularly have girls just come up to us and be like, who are you guys? What are you? They'd be like, what are you? You know, they'd be kind of so almost confused that they'd have to approach us just because we were having so much fun and um, show, showing so much positivity around ourselves. And oftentimes, you know, again, it's because we lower the filter. We're not just scanning the room to see, oh, who's just a hot girl? That's all I'm going to focus on because that just never works. I've never really seen anyone pull that off. Um, that one track tunnel vision mind makes you look like you're wanting something from some other person. So it shoots yourself to the foot right off the bat. I mean, I'm approaching people all day long, so I don't really ever have to... Um, you know, again, I stay ready. So I have to get ready. Um, and then the third thing for that is I build so much social proof. Um, you know, I'm known for creating all the social circle concepts, but what the whole point of why I build a social circle is to have social proof. Uh, I really, I, I really don't hang out with as many people as I used to, you know, in the past I'd go to a nightclub with a hundred girls in Vegas or 50 girls in Cabo or, you know, those kinds of things. Um, I just realized that I can do that with a, a lot less effort and I can, because the whole point of that is build social proof. So if you have social, for example, tonight I'm going out to the highest end sushi restaurant in all of Manhattan, you know, I have a couple of my mastermind guys with me and um, we know every single cock to waitress there. Um, I mean, the last time I was there, some of the cast of Succession was there. Um, uh, I've seen Leonardo DiCaprio there. I mean, it's a very, very high end place and we get served drinks first and they literally tell us your money's no good here. You know, sometimes they'll, you know, we'll order five, six hundred dollars of sushi and they'll sometimes charge me one dollar almost as a joke at the end of the night. Uh, they let us stay past closing time. So it's kind of hard to have anxiety or nerves when you've approached a handful of people during the day. You're not filtering people. But then lastly, the manager of the nightclub, you know, serves you before he serves any of the, you know, the hotter models that are there or what have you. And if you're getting served first, if he's high-fiving you, you have all of that fanfare already. It's kind of hard to have anxiety in that kind of setup. So when you have the third thing is social proof. When you build social proof into your environment, wherever you, now, 
the gym that I, you know, the gym that I have, um, you know, that I go to mostly, um, it's a gym that's filled with incredibly beautiful women. Um, there's one in LA, New York, there's a couple other locations for this gym. The coffee shop I go to, um, it's packed with the same beautiful women, the, the restaurant I go to at night. You know, we're out of there sometimes by 11 or 12 o'clock. We're not going to nightclubs till three, four in the morning, wasting our time. We can be in a venue for an hour, hour and a half and pull every single time, literally because of those three principles, that social proof really being the key. Yeah, just want to throw an example in there. Um, it's like I, I imagine there are lots of guys who do have this filter where they don't approach it with the mindset of you can socialize with just about everyone and we can make fun out of nothing. Yeah, I mean, it truly is creating a, a moment of collaboration instead of competition. You know, it's you know, it, a lot of men get into this from desperation, from feeling like uh, they just weren't really included. They weren't inside the proverbial velvet rope, right? They were outside of the velvet rope and things like that. But when, you know, even that what you just mentioned, I mean, one, one of the things I like to say to a couple that's clearly in a relationship is, hey, how's your first date going? Or this is definitely a Tinder date, right? And they just kind of laugh because they've, you know, you're really bringing a lot of value to them because they maybe are having kind of a boring run of the mill dinner or what have you. And you just cause them to laugh, right? You That you both are kind of, you know, it's kind of like a two plus two equals five situation where you both actually get tangible benefit to each other from you approaching, even if you're not trying to, you know, steal the guy's girl or do anything silly like that. You're actually just adding value to that situation. So it's a great example you gave.